Good morning. We are Thursday, June 3rd. Um, Minister Hicks will provide the overall update on behalf of Premier Savigata today. And then Minister Shutiepik, Minister of Family Services, has a statement and we can get into questions. Thanks. Last good Lumi June 3, Minister Hicks, King of Beauty Luni, Sibula Timo Halimalangayok, Minister Shutiepik, Halimalang, and Mayok and Malo Persisitakwe. Good morning. There are still no confirmed or probable cases of COVID-19 in Nunavut. And like the Premier, I'd like to say that every chance I get. Today, the total number of people under investigation to date is 1,122, of which 106 people are currently under investigation. Starting Monday, June 8th, the Kalawitz Beer and Wine Store will be open for elders over 60 only from 1 to 4 p.m. on Mondays. This is a measure to ensure social distancing and avoiding crowds for our elders. I ask that everyone respect and be mindful of that. I also want to remind everyone that having someone else purchase your daily limit at the beer and wine store is considered bootlegging. I want to remind people that no matter what you do this weekend, please maintain two meters of physical distance, wash your hands often, and stay home if you feel unwell. Our measures continue to keep us safe. Now that we're easing restrictions, we must all continue doing our part to keep each other safe and well. Thank you. Okay. 1968 <laughs> uh, as part of our, the Government of Canada response to COVID-19 pandemic, seniors are in receipt of either and or the old age security or the guaranteed income supplement will receive a one-time tax-free payment. Those seniors eligible for the old age security pension will receive an additional $300 and those seniors eligible for the guaranteed income supplement will receive an additional dollars <laughs> This payment will be available to all individuals who are already eligible to receive the old age security pension or the guaranteed income supplement in June 2020. These payments will be automatically applied. The Government of Nunavut is committed to ensuring our seniors are well provided for. As such, I am pleased to announce that the Government of Nunavut has enacted an exemption regulation for this one-time payment, increased to 
the Government of Canada's Guaranteed Income Supplement and the Old Age Security. This will provide the maximum amount of funds from the Government of Canada and the Government of Nunavut to seniors on income assistance who are vulnerable and financially insecure. Dako akili utayut at win na ulat tut kikuli manut pikat taron na riyutunut inuto hasil tinik ubaloni na luna tao si mayuni kina ujat sa ano ikayut tinik June 2020 mi akili tao na tu kilamik ila tut si kato gya tungit tut puto chau tigit win na lahatun nuna buka pa makungit at suro tehang kata dako inuto hagut ikayot tao gun na sa hulugi tay may mat huwet tunga nuna buka pa makungit Pero yung otit si Simon Mata malitaw na ako mita ko a persibio jangin mata at ako siya akili utaw yut inuto hasil ti tango hatakto at maloki na ojasano ikayu ti tara hatakto ng ita tako ikayu utaw siya na ako ti na oyay kana tao gawa makungin nik nuna voga gawa makungin nilo inaunod tako nung ikayu siya tara patunod at malo at so nakto mituin na kaya linod at maloki na ojasati ko ako ngilo ko ti hatakto na Uh, Dr. Patterson? Oh, the mic's not on. That's all. Okay. Uh, Dr. Patterson, uh, Kent Triscoll, EPTN National News. Uh, I can't hear you. Is that not working? Uh, the Akalawi Black History Society is going to be holding a protest tomorrow at the Four Corners. If they get the crowd that they're hoping for, that's going to be more than 25 people, which is the current limit for public gatherings. Would that public gathering be in violation of your public health order? And if so, how does your department deal with that? Kent Driscoll, APT, and Kumnik Luta, Patterson, Tama na yung kaya tapto may hirm na tapto ay pwede kaya katulad sa tigeng ito kapa sa kaya tapos sila ang atan na matsang inerminik na lo nang ito lo tako at twenty five ang atan ng ane ang atan tako sa kumit siya yakan na hanang ito lo rin ang mamalita o kasi mayano. I don't think it's appropriate for me to get in the way of free speech and and the right to protest extraordinary events like that. Well events like this. Um, my recommendation would be that people who are attending um, maintain or respect social distancing as, as much as possible. And as per our, uh, in line with previous recommendations, have masks ready or available uh, if or for when distancing can't be maintained. Uwan nuli na manangin matako isa mga lugi yamin ng sakya at tigo matilugi rubalo ako kagto tigo matilugi na maging ita yamin ng damar ko nung ako sa halo ako nang ito nga kasi anita ko pa katao niya at tuino katigil kanigilo at tayle magun na ko tayle kanigilo at tayle malutik tako alatu lugi yamin si majut sur lugi na matuwa si magyalin matuwa ni atu na kahugay yaktago atu na kahugay yaktago ino katigil kanigilo at tayle gun na jangit pata and just again, you covered some of it in your answer. Uh, for the people who plan on attending, what steps can they take to keep themselves and others safe? As much as possible, stay six feet apart from people who aren't in your household. And for when that distance can't be maintained, have a mask with you and, and be ready to put it on for when the distance is less than six feet. Tak kuno apa kata uni atau nu tema six feet ni kesigan ni tak ini lima orang sigi kesawa kat terlalu terlalu mewah kat tinggi kita minut ambal oki nama matu ame atu ina kat terlalu kita makan itu selalu ada ati ati gayak tangan ni. I'm a transgender Nancy Agnews. Dr. Patterson, just looking for an update on the individual in Sunny Kilowak who was diagnosed with whooping cough. Emma Tranter, Nunatia Kunik Luta Patterson, then Hursuna to me, Sonicilla, and Hursuna Tala, Dulum, Mohano, Lingalaka. Doing well, and we still do not have any other known cases, so it's not considered an outbreak. Hanning Chap Dulum, 
What about the individual in the south, the Nunavut resident who was diagnosed with COVID-19? They nearly none of them are alone. I need to have a bit of some money. No one just has to have some money. Can we look at it? They know. Also doing well. It remains in the south for other other reasons besides COVID. Can we get some money? 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 And I have a question for Minister Hayes. Mr. Hicks, uh, the other week you encouraged Nunavut to have a staycation in Nunavut, obviously with the, the current travel restrictions, um, but we've heard that national parks at least this summer will not be reopening because of COVID-19 restrictions. How do you encourage Nunavut to, to stay and vacation in the territory when most things are still shut down? Minister Hicks, Nunavut, Aula kat tahun yang ini nabi kita mana ni loh kita tu ini kat tahun lagi ya. Aula ni loh kita macam kau aula kat hang ini nama sulit tak berhang mata tak kau lu karena tak memang kau sebi matu hilang ini kat tahun mata kanor kita tak kau matu semua jauh pala galap alu ti lagi. Tama ni kau nala kita tu. Thanks for the question, Emma. And again, I don't know all the full details on if there could be some type of an exemption granted to Nunavut National Parks. I don't know, but uh, realistically, that's just a small part of this great territory that we live in. Uh, there's even just going to another community uh, and seeing some of the different landscape, uh, different outfitter or tourism opportunities in your within your region, within your community, within the territory. Uh, there's so many different things to do, and I don't think having a restriction on accessing national parks should hold anyone back. Jackie McKay, CBC News. Mr. Hicks, um, how much money has the GN decided to give uh, in Food Airlines? Jackie McKay, CBC Kunit Minister Hicks, Nunavugapa Makuni Hatchini. We still haven't concluded our negotiations with the two airlines that were that are our main providers, Calm Air and Canadian North. That negotiation expired a month ago. Um, what's the hold up? Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than the first time we negotiated the agreement with the airline. It was a short-term uh, agreement for that first month. Uh, since then, there's been a number of federal programs announced, such as the wage subsidy program, uh, that ha has a lot of complexity to the financial uh, data. Uh, from the accounting standpoint from the airline so it's it's a little bit more complicated but it, there's nothing uh, uh, confrontational that, that I'm aware of And another aspect, to, I guess not to complicate things, but to make sure that due diligence is done. Uh, we want to make sure that the airlines are sustained, but these are also public dollars that we're basically subsidizing a, a private enterprise for. So we want to make sure that we're accountable to our residents and our taxpayers and to our uh, legislative partners at the as a regular members caucus. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Uh, 
makita ina cia hugalo agatigo kisa nita tamako na mina hatiyo yun ay makina yan ay tuno si tuno na tuto tuto tuno si yun yung agata sa ata cia guti haga agata tamako nung atak si yagtiyo yun at amalo malegal yung tuto na mga tamako akina yun ay pilugi Um, this next question comes from a listener. Um, they would like to know if um, any EU employees traveling south for the summer, um, if their annual leave days will be used to isolate um, for isolation hubs coming um, back up, considering that teachers uh, will have to use theirs. <laughs> Pakai kita masih dengan kita kucing ini atau kita kalau mengatau tidak kata kita mahu dengan kita kibin itu yang mungkin mereka ini nanti lagi dah macam ini, ini nanti cuci, dah mereka hati tahu mata. Thanks for the question, Jackie. I think it's important to note that any employee of the civil servant is a resident of Nunavut and has to follow the isolation requirements that we've put into place. That being said, I would obviously caution anyone. Uh, who is planning on leaving the territory to make sure that they look at the restrictions that are in place in the jurisdiction or through jurisdictions that they need to go uh, to get to where they're going. Uh, this is an unprecedented time and, and all around the world there's, there's major restrictions and major inconveniences for people. Uh, that's why I've been stating and, and I think uh, this is a real opportunity to explore our own backyard for our, for our holidays this year. Kaya namin jaki, tama ko yung kana yakti, tama ko na nunabuga, tama ko ngin nunabug mula tama tetra magyahap tigut. Ang malamal ng yahap kaya ng atay mga inutu kay nagyahap ng mutuyong may binil tila alerotik. Ujang sa cia ko yak kata ko nunabug may aulang na yahap tigut ay ko atawasing ni kana tama yahap ito si man niyoyuni. Isulit tabe hatit si min matamal ito ug yaring ni manajo ng ito ko lai ka tatama ni nunagjami. Nun ada yang melayu asing ini, tapi mama lihat juga yang nak suruh lawa kecik si mama tak tahu mai mau kah kat tak si mama buat apa ni? Nun aku minga, kau yang setengah aku logit, aku lakukan setengah aku logit, apa ni? Nun aku iluan. My next question is for Dr. Patterson. Dr. Patterson, we've spoken previously about opening up the border, but with NWT, can you give us an update on if we're still planning on bubbling with NWT? Dr. Patterson, thank you. Kilinga nuna wapiju tigi lugu taka alu nuna cia wapiju tigi lugu matu yak tau ni amanga taka alu lah tigi yak tau nak lugu aku nengan ini nuna cia nuna bulu isma gaya usma baman nama. Yeah, we're. We're still planning on doing that. We're working out the logistics of doing it in a way that ensures that it doesn't become a loophole or a way to avoid isolation if somebody's coming from outside of NWT but aiming to get into Nunavut. <laughs> So lunat saya mengar tu lunat saya sila tanya lalu kita mahu lunat bumbu istirahat suatu ina rehang sila kira suatu lalu kita mahu masuk lepas nak tahu tiap. Are you able to give us any more information about when we should be expecting some sort of announcement on this? Hangat kita mana nalo naya kaya kau. We'll announce it as soon as we've got all those details worked out. Tak kau lalu lengan pijak kaya kau tu kata nalo naya kaya kau. I also just wanted to follow up on um, a question from Emma about the resident uh, with COVID down south. Uh, you said they're there, they're there for non-COVID related reasons now. Have they recovered from COVID? Uh, I'm honestly not sure if they've uh, been classified that way in that jurisdiction or not because the, the definitions change a little bit, but the main reason for that individual remaining in the hospital is no longer the COVID. <laughs> <clears throat> Rajni Sharma, Nunavut News. Um, Dr. Patterson, <clears throat> do you feel like at this time uh, 
confident that there's enough equipment, enough staff in Nunavut for you to deal with a uh, COVID outbreak. Rajni Sharma, Nunavut News, Kundi Luta, Paris, and Mano, Namachalakita, Makosuna Kuta, Namachini, Nikamal, Kanayak, the Hatsha, Nitin, Nikaman, and Nova Jan, nineteen Tamani, Samatalakan. It depends on the size of the outbreak. Uh, in a large outbreak, we have what we need to do the initial work, and we would require um, increasing um, or a large amount of supplies to be delivered quickly from the federal government. But I am confident that they also have increased their reserves that are in the south and could accommodate our needs if something like that happened. Minister Hicks, you've been talking about people um, traveling in territory as a way of getting out. I'm just wondering, um, does the GN have any plans to help people to encourage that travel? Like, will they be covering any kind of travel expenses? Minister Hicks, not as of yet, uh, and I, I'm not sure what I would anticipate any. I know Nunavut Tourism in the past has ne helped outfitters negotiate rates uh, for southern entry, so I, I would like to think that there would be an opportunity maybe to work out uh, something with the with the airlines, but uh, not at this time. Checking case, CBC News. Um, my questions for Minister Shubhiyat. <laughs> um, previously, we had a question about um, a foster parent who wanted to take their um, their foster child down south for the summer and um, is told because of the travel restrictions they're not allowed to. Um, are you able to give us more information about uh, for foster parents about uh, if they if they could take their children out of the territory this summer? Jackie McKay, CBC, Kunik, Apekutili, Tako, Tigo, and Mohake, and Nahatatu, Aperis, Yurasima, Mahaluna, and Rotigum, Namanga, Tigo, and Marika, and Nartamini, Aya, and Arto, to Sarsimagalo, to what they may get hanging in Nikisa, to visit Chiga, and Nakita Matamo. Thank you for the question. Each, you know, within our department, it's a lot of it is case by case, but when it comes to foster parents, we're in a government with restrictions, uh, and I think realistically, we need to abide by those restrictions. I'm wondering, um, considering that children are not in schools anymore and are at home, are you seeing any changes in um, people reporting uh, kids to the system um, since COVID's happened? There has not been an increase. Because there been a decrease? As far as I know, it's a status quo. There has not been an increase. Across the country, um, we've heard of domestic violence rates going up um, due to people staying home because of COVID. Um, has your department noticed any changes within Nunavut since um, restrictions have been in place because of COVID? Changes with what? 
and domestic violence rates going up. Tamani ka na tamito sa mga simamal, anan anan nagtakta o hatakta may sunggo simamata. Ang katsi simato ay nang nang minuno ba juan na tape juan tigil lugo taman na kaya nang simawa taman ay may sunggo ka simamata. Initially, no, there wasn't because there are, people are in isolation. You don't know numbers. Um, that saying that, though, we certainly have. Uh, we know who the vulnerable are, and uh, we certainly try and uh, uh, outreach through our uh, um, social workers, as such, within the territory. Aga, tako pi yung atilugo taman na katchun ng ininalo na tong yung kasimatuin ng atalo ka yung managani. Tamak ko yung mga bugalo at ay ko. An ila an nagtatag tuin na kay le kaw yung yak tayo hatag tuin ulit kay Jero kano ng ikalang mga ata. There's been a lot of money given and talked about vulnerable people in shelter space due to COVID. Are you feeling confident in Nunavut shelters if COVID was to enter the territory in their ability to deal with these most vulnerable people? Tak kau kena yang disakit semua juga tu palu hatta ngai kau tahu gak ham nak panu nukat jual nak pijut tinggi lugu tak kau le angin kau hangit tu be taman nasi amat dengan kau kanu gak yang ini ini ismailu melati. We know there's shortages in our territory, but that being said, we've had because we have no positive. It's give, it's allowed us time to prepare. So at this point, I I believe we are ready as a territory. Would you be able to elaborate on prepare? Have you taken measures or done anything to? Further your ability to help these people, um, even though we don't have COVID in the territory. Nalo na yung yaya kan nalo na kaya kano palo ng yaya sumam mga ati kano yaya yokta ng yaya mga ati tama na nawa juan na to kalam na kano na builo ani. I'll use Ikhaluid as an example. The Ohutak shelter they have another facility right now to ensure there's distancing. I know within the federal pool of buildings there are buildings. Put aside if there was a positive. So there are things in place. I have no solo roti gilego than a rota gore. Ang kahangit to bilay ko asya na ang kahangit to no pabit sa ulat to halat to asikan ng anik. Amalugaw mo to hagkuil log to roti niya to inaktahak to sanak bakta us may unik ma inutubig ng to nagyak to nisya magto halat nakal. Uh, Ken Driscoll, EPTN National News, uh, Minister Hicks. Uh, you just announced today that the beer and wine store will now be open on Mondays from about 1, 1.30 till 4-ish for elders only. Now, the beer and wine store is usually closed on Monday to the public. You're making it so that elders in town are the only people who will have access to alcohol from that store on that day. I'm wondering, is there any concern that you're setting elders up to either be in a position to be asked to bootleg or be or face elder abuse where they're pressured into going? Kent Risco, APT, and Kunik Minister Hicks, Nalona, Sakaga, Vitana, Beer Tabby, Wine Tabby, Matunga, Hatalanga, Nagajami, One Meat Formwood. Ino tu ham nui nak tan, matu mak gayu sung kalau orang nak gajau kut tak ko inai atau inak halalang kata tabani ulungan i. Semalu tu hangilat ilai tak ko solo sekumit silo te new world sekarut jau kat jika yang ini mengata ubalu ni pinik pinik lupa ulah kaya mengata. Thanks for the question, Kent, and absolutely that was a component of the discussions internally. At the same time, we have to realize that. Uh, so, a lot of our elders standing in line for extended periods of time. You know, some people have mobility issues. Uh, we want to make sure that they can do so in a safe manner. Uh, so we do have, we did have staff on on site anyway of doing permitting and things like that. Uh, and if we have to bring in a, a few extra casual staff to to work that day, that that's also uh, part of the process. But I think most importantly. Uh, as a society, we respect our elders, 
and unfortunately we do see too many examples of elder abuse, financial elder abuse, uh, and I strongly encourage people to, to have some respect uh, uh, and, and not influence somebody or force somebody to go to the beer and wine store to purchase alcohol on their behalf. I did make a brief statement of that in, in my statement earlier. That is still considered bootlegging. Uh, so please be very cognizant that you're not putting our elders in a, in a further vulnerable position. I'm <laughs> I will add to that if you don't mind, Kent. Just uh, as other retailers have put it, the post office and, and grocery stores have put in elders only time. Uh, I did receive a couple of emails from the members of the public. Uh, with concerns uh, of their parents or grandparents or, or themselves having to to stand in line, some the lineups do get quite long on some days, uh, where we felt that this was an opportunity to be able to to provide that service to our elders in a, in a safe as manner as possible. <laughs> I'm wondering, Minister Hicks, the benefit that opened for essential workers on Monday, uh, how many people have applied uh, to receive that benefit? The government would benefit. I'm sorry. I'm trying to check with Minister Hicks. Thanks for the question, Emma. Unfortunately, I don't have an answer to that. I do have a briefing this afternoon, and that was one of the questions I was going to inquire about as it has been open for almost a week now. I'm not sure who this question is for, but we heard from the RCMP uh, chief superintendent last month that there are an increase in police-related violent incidents in the territory. She wasn't sure if it's connected to, to COVID-19, but she did make that inference. We all saw on Tuesday the video that was posted by the resident in Kingite. I'm wondering if the GN has any further response uh, to that video at this point. Thank you uh, again, Emma. That that video stirred up a lot of discussion, and and I think it's uh, to be frank, it's probably best directed to Minister Halawak's office uh, through, a, through a media request to, to get an update on that. I think we're all uh, even more aware uh, of racial discrimination and police br brutality with everything that's going on in North America right now and, and around the world. Uh, so I think it's an important, I think it's an important conversation piece uh, to really highlight how the inequities of people are treated and, and how we need to 
work together uh, to make improvements on, on a lot of these social issues. Actually, if I don't, if you, if I may, I just want to add one, one final uh, comment. There has been, uh, there's been concerns raised at some of the isolation hubs on how uh, to address concerns. So we've actually created another website, or sorry, another email address uh, for people that can bring forward their concerns with the isolation hub. Uh, a lot of people have been going through the, the other COVID, uh, the CPHO travel requests, and it's been a little bit uh, cumbersome in trying to navigate through that. So if, if I will add that there's a new email address, isolationrelations at gov.nu.ca, and if anyone has any concerns with the isolation hubs with any of the service or any uh, positive and negative, I, I've been seeing more positive than negative lately, so I appreciate that. Uh, that they can contact that email address. CPHO travel request I am a little